So the first topic that we're going to focus on is could this be meningococcal sepsis? So what is the rash that's associated with this? And this is really important because it's firstly a deadly disease. Secondly, it's relatively common even though it has massively decreased in incidence since the meningococcal vaccine came out. Uh, and thirdly, a lot of parents are worried about it. So you need to know uh, enough about it to A, recognise it, but B, be able to reassure a parent when a child does not have any signs of meningococcal sepsis. So... The main question to ask um, is not so much about the rash when we're thinking about meningococcal sepsis, but more just, are there signs of sepsis? And I've done a whole topic uh, of separate videos on sepsis and management of it in the paediatric emergency department. But the main things that I want you to focus on are actually not the features of the rash, but are there other signs of sepsis? This can be difficult in a child because some children have very subtle signs of sepsis and the younger the child is, the more subtle those signs can be. So you've got to take small abnormalities seriously, you've got to take parental concerns seriously and you've got to take these signs particularly seriously as well. So if a child has abnormal observations, if they have... Uh, you know, if, they, if they've got skin changes like mottling or they look particularly pale and they look unwell, that's something to take seriously. So is altered mental state, and mental state. you know, if the parent says, oh, they're just not behaving like they normally do. They've got abnormal capillary refill, which should be central, remember, not peripheral cap refill. And then decreased urine output, another sign of poor perfusion, which could be a sign of septic shock. So all of those things, important to, to bear in mind. Now, the specific things that we also need to think about with meningococcal disease is signs of sepsis like I mentioned but then signs of meningitis so they do do they have those classic kind of photophobia neck stiffness fever but bear in mind a lot of those times you don't get all three of those classic signs um, so if they have any signs of meningism got to be worried and then do they have a non-blanching rash that's another big cause of concern so it should be particularly concerning if this is a rapidly progressing non-blanching rash um, and it's also particularly worrying if it's not just restricted to the F SVC distribution. So when you get a few petechiae all above the level of the nipples, this can just be a, a sign of mechanical petechiae formation, i.e. you get raised pressure when the child coughs or vomits. It causes these tiny little blood vessels to burst and you get petechiae forming from these little hemorrhages in the skin. Now those are much less con concerning if you just have, say, two or three petechiae above the level of the nipples. If you've got a petechiae below the level of the nipples or you've got a rapidly spreading widespread non-blanching rash especially if it's in the fa in the trunk um you know you've got to take that really seriously think about meningococcal sepsis get a pediatric review get a senior review and start some urgent initial management here we've got a few pictures from dermnet of the petechiae from meningococcal sepsis now the two images on the left are uh, from in fact I think all three of them are actually from adults so they don't actually have pictures in children and there are loads of pictures of meningococcal rash in children but they're copyrighted and they're not available on the Creative Commons uh, usage rights so I haven't included them in this video but essentially you're looking for these little dots of, of red blood in the skin um, that don't blanch so they don't go white when you press them um, and sometimes these uh, join together and form purpura like you can see in the middle picture here uh, on the right now, what are the urgent first steps? You need to get your senior to come and help you and you need to get urgent IV access. Antibiotics need to go in and you ideally need blood cultures. Now, blood cultures are important, but they shouldn't delay the administration of antibiotics. So if you don't get enough blood for cultures, still get the antibiotics in. That's the critical treatment they need and they need it urgently. And they need something um, that will cover uh, meningococcal um, bugs and um, that will usually be in your local guidelines. Um, so that's it for meningococcal sepsis. The um, kind of take home point I'd say is that signs of sepsis, they can be subtle. So you've got to be really careful when you assess a child, um, particularly if they have any of those kind of abnormal findings on examination that I mentioned. The next topic we're going to do is about Kawasaki disease.